Hey guys, what is up? Andy here again. And today we're going to be doing a uh, another take a lot video. Um, it's going to be how to connect zero to sync to take a lot. So if you've got your inventory on zero and you want to get that uh, stock levels uh, constantly live sync to take a lot via the API, uh, watch this video. Um, and also it's going to touch on batches and how to send a batch to um, take a lot uh, with obviously all your stock. So couple of things um, this might be a slightly longer video sorry about that um, but I'll try to go as quick as possible and I only use sheets uh, to get all of these things done um, and a couple of plugins for sheets so you don't have to be a coder I'm not a coder I'm also just figuring all of these things out so yeah uh, bear with me if, if I seem a bit rookie at some point and yeah uh, if you enjoy the videos make sure to like and subscribe so um, jumping in, just a little bit of workflow just to explain. If you're not using Xero, you can basically probably use an API call to bring your stock into Google Sheets uh, using some of the API calls that I've explained in some of my other videos um, with an API connector, which is a plugin that I use. I'll show you guys that. Uh, but I use Xero and I use I don't use an API call to bring it in. I use Geocon, uh, which is a really, really, really awesome plugin if you're using um, Xero. It basically does a lot of the reporting and setting up. Of, it's an API call, but it does it all for you. Um, so if you want a profit and loss, you don't have to code that all with API. It just brings in the profit and loss and however many months. So it takes it, simplifies it one step uh, further for you. All right. So. What do we have on our screen? Uh, I should probably, that wasn't really relevant what we were looking at a moment ago. Uh, it will be, but I'll get to that. Uh, this is sort of the starting baseline. Um, these are some SKUs that I sell on Takelot. These are some of the descriptions, quantities on hand, uh, the sales details, uh, the sales price that I've got in zero. Um, this is also coming from zero, uh, whether it's tracked as inventory or not. I put this one here specifically to show you, uh, what happens if you don't want to, you know, uh, if it's not tracked as inventory, then I've got another one is offer that's coming from, uh, this offers, uh, call over here, which is going, uh, on to take a lot. It's doing a offers, a, a get a API call. It's pulling all of the offers from take a lot and it's putting it on a sheet and then I'm running a VLOOKUP for this SKU. Is it in that, is it an offer on take a lot that I'm selling? Cause I have SKUs that don't sell on take a lot and some that do. So in this case, this one doesn't, uh, 315. This one is for sale. This one is, this one is, this one isn't. Um, yeah. So some of them aren't for sale on take. So I don't want to actually send batch send my data to take a lot if um, it's not for sale on take a lot it just wants it'll then try create an API it'll try create an offer which isn't what I'm after okay uh, lead time days I've also got uh, this is just five it's basically always going to be five unless uh, unless it's here on lead time override where I've just put in some uh, SKUs that that are basically lead time override to zero which means they for some other reason it's an emergency we're not selling that uh, or it's just like quickly put it on hold you just make this to zero or you put it on your offer you put an SKU and say this one's zero kind of pauses it to almost like a release uh, emergency escape anyway uh, then there's a price whole big complicated formula it's basically because what the price is on um, uh, oh no, no these these prices come from a little bit more complicated let's not go to but it's my prices aren't set by zero they set by WooCommerce so I actually overwrite it over here and it also includes a bit of a multiplier uh, because of to account for take loss fees so it just times it by a little bit and it's also got a minimum threshold uh, you guys can see that that formula there it basically means it won't sell for less than 120 because with shipping and fees and all of that take a lot just there would be nothing left for for me um, recommended retail that's always just equal to price uh, we have a okay and then take a lot inventory level I always have it set so if I have 13 
I tell take lot I have 11. If I have 6, I tell take lot I have 4. If I have 187, I tell take lot I have 185. Just because there's a, such a thing as oversells and take lot really, really doesn't like that. So, um, basically all of that is pretty simple data, uh, pretty easy to get. This comes straight out of zero. So with Geocon, um, I'm going to do a separate video just going into the depth of how to set that up with Geocon if you can't figure it out. Uh, it's a, a it's a plugin called Geocon for Zero. Uh, have a look for that under Sheets Add-ons. Uh, you'll you'll really enjoy it. There's a free trial. Uh, try it out and just pull the inventory report. Um, basically, this is the creme de la creme of what you're going to need if you want to batch send anything to take a lot. This was a very much an anxiety inducing formula and I wish to never ever ever have to code this again and luckily enough for you guys it is pasted below the video. Um, it's because you have to to get a, a inverted comma you have to put four it's a very stressful thing. But anyway it puts it all into this format and that's going to be critical to being able to this this is what's going to get sent to take lot in a post body. Uh, okay. So all your data is laid out here. So generally, I, when I pull the stock report, I actually get a couple, uh, about a thousand rows of data here. Um, I've deleted all of those just so I can, this is, you know, I feel comfortable sharing this on the interweb. Um, this would just work. You would just copy that down all the way to, I, I copy this uh, all the way to like row 1000. So zero will paste in any information here and it'll automatically populate uh, it'll auto. This is just a, dry, a drop down formula. So is this, so is this, so on. But anyway, query. So what I do here is I run a query. Uh, query zero stock this sheet. A, bring uh, query uh, uh, columns A to K. Select A B C D F G H I J K, where A is not null, and E is true, and F is not null. So basically, it's going to bring back only the stuff that is tracked on um, take lot on zero which is, uh, you know, if it's not tracked, it's not supposed to be there in my situation. Probably the same for you because you need an SKU on, uh, you need an SKU to be able to sell to take lot. Um, is offer that is means, is it for an offer on take lot? Uh, if it's not an offer, it's not going to send, it's not going to show it here. Uh, that also updates hourly, whether, uh, whether the, all the offers lead time, it's also, uh, oh, okay, that's, and yeah, so those are basically the two things and when a is not null so it's not going to bring back empty rows basically because uh, you don't want empty rows and it's just got you know we send by doing this I'm sending much less data I could send this whole packet uh, but times 800 rows and then of that 300 rows become redundant it's way too much uh, this for instance is a lot less and there is a limit to the JSON body uh, over here, it's limited to I think five thousand characters. Uh, actually, I think it's much more. Uh, it's it. I hit the limit on when I tried to send about eight hundred SKU, uh, about two hundred and fifty SKUs to take a lot. I hit the limit um, of this, so I really figured I'd add this query step in to reduce the amount of stuff getting sent. Um, okay, so basically, this is a formula text join. It text joins all of these and it puts the comma delimiter in between each uh, uh, body or whatever and it just puts it here. So this is the whole purpose of the sheet. There's nothing much going on there. Uh, okay, then it comes to setting up the API. Okay, we open up AP API Connector. There is a, a an affiliate link below. Uh, I would appreciate if you sign up using that link. I get a bit of buck then and it kind of makes, uh, makes these videos a little bit easier to make. Um, I really love the app. Uh, I use it for pretty much everything, uh, more and more every day. Uh, it's just, it makes, uh, it gives me access to data as a business owner that I would never have access to otherwise. Um, fundamental stuff. Offers API, uh, not really important. That's what I use uh, over here. There's another video on that on my channel. I uh, can't miss it. Uh, batch. Okay, so uh, what we're going to do is essentially, uh, we're going to create a batch now. So if I edit that, uh, this is the URL path that you'll need to use. Then you need to put in multiple keys, except application for the JSON, 
uh, content type, application, just copy these, uh, except here, you'll put key and then you'll paste in your key from your seller portal there. Um, then under post body, just put in uh, the square bracket, the square bracket, uh, then plus, 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 then reference the cell over here, A1, and plus, 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 and then close it. That's going to make it, uh, it's going to reference this every time. Then what you want to do is just where is it going to go? It's going to go to create batch. The response, it does send a little bit of a uh, an update batch, which you'll see in a sec. And let's just see if this is still working. Run. Okay, it says there, request uh, successfully, ran successfully. And we've got to create batch. You can see here is the batch ID. And that batch ID contains a bunch of uh, all the, the, the data. And then what do you want to do on the next call? If I go back to manage requests, I've got another one called batch update status, which is not a post, it's a get. And this is what it looks like. It's a get, and it's always going to get A2. And by getting A2, it's going to send this to take lot and it's going to say, hey, this batch that we just sent, how's it doing? What happened? What's the results? Because sometimes your products aren't going to update because the lead time's off, or, or this, or that, or this, or that. Then we go to batches, uh, and we can run this. You'll see some data here in a second. Okay, so under batches, we can basically say, uh, under here, there's a giving a couple of errors. Ah, okay. So what I had to do is I, I just had to quickly change this output option. Uh, output options. I had it on grid, which looked a bit funny. Uh, this looks a bit confusing. So I just change it back to default single row. Run that. And as you can see, uh, it's just going to reject this one because that one was uh, a set to lead time zero days, which means it's not going to update. Uh, then we are back over here. And then these two have successfully updated. Um, that's pretty much it. There is a limit. I think you can't send more than like 10,000 products in the in a in a line, but Essentially, you guys, that's that's kind of all you need to do to send a batch to take lot. Uh, the bigger batches might take four or five minutes to update everything. But over and above that, that's kind of all you need to do. Um, what you can do one step further is from manage requests, you can schedule it. So what I would do is you can schedule the zero to refresh your stock every six hours or every three hours. Then what you can do on top of that is you add a new trigger. And from that trigger, you basically select that I want to run this uh, batch thing every hour. And then basically, it's just going to send your stock every single hour, making sure that you don't oversell, making sure that your stock's up to date on take a lot and whatnot. And then what I would do is have another sheet, which is called your audit sheet, uh, which basically goes into saying you know you pull your offers on take lot versus your stock on uh your master or your source of truth for instance zero and you just do a you run a constant comparison so i i have one going at the moment and i can always see if um my take lot stocks off then i know that's up an extra unit and then i can investigate those uh, certain items it's always just generally but because of that hour delay with the api you can't run this uh, uh unfortunately more than um an hour every hour so they could there will always be some fluctuations if you sell it on take a lot it's not going to update um always in sync uh i think there are other ones that can do like down to every five minutes uh i think coupler.io but uh, uh, i might stand corrected on that but yeah guys i'm not going to drag it out any longer hopefully you learned something from this video and if you did make sure to like and subscribe and i'll catch you guys another time peace